a storm is coming. It might happen tomorrow, or not for years. But when it does, it could shut down power grids, ground planes, disrupt a GPS, and even knock out the internet. Before we go deeper, if you're into stories where science meets survival, make sure to hit subscribe. This is Dangerous Earth, and today we're facing one of the biggest, most unpredictable threats from space. The next solar superstorm. Are we ready? Or are we just living on borrowed time? Solar storms are triggered by violent eruptions on the surface of the Sun, known as coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. These are massive bursts of charged particles and magnetic energy, traveling at millions of kilometers per hour. When a CME heads straight toward Earth, it can slam into our planet's magnetosphere, causing a geomagnetic storm. The beautiful side? Auroras, those dancing green and red lights near the poles. But the dark side? They can fry transformers, cripple satellites, and disrupt the electromagnetic system our world depends on. We live in the most technologically connected era in history. Our society runs on electricity, satellites, wireless communication, aviation, finance, and navigation systems. All of these are vulnerable to intense space weather. A strong enough solar storm could take out GPS satellites, confusing aviation and shipping routes, interrupt radio and military communications, black out power grids, leaving cities in the dark, damage transformers that take months or years to replace, corrupt and destroy data centers and undersea internet cables. It could even disrupt hospital equipment, emergency services and air traffic control. This isn't just a science problem, it's an everything problem. In 1859, the world experienced the most powerful solar storm on record, the Carrington Event. It was so intense that telegraph systems actually caught fire. Their operators were shocked, and auroras lit up the skies as far south as Cuba and Colombia. Now, imagine that happening today. When we rely on technology for everything, from banking and transportation to healthcare and defense, Experts estimate a modern Carrington-level storm would cause two to three trillion dollars, trillion with a T, in damages globally. And that's just in the first few weeks. You might think, sure, but that was 1859, we've got better tech now. But here's the truth. Better tech means more risk. In 1989, a solar storm knocked out the power grid in Canada, plunging 6 million people into darkness. It took just 90 seconds from the moment the storm hit for the lights to go out. In 2003, another geomagnetic storm disrupted satellites that forced airlines to reroute, and it even knocked out parts of Sweden's power grid. And in 2022, SpaceX lost 40 brand new Starlink satellites after a geomagnetic storm destabilized their orbits, causing them to burn up in Earth's atmosphere. This isn't hypothetical, it's already happening. And the scariest part of this is we can't predict these storms with certainty. Sure, we monitor solar activity, track sunspots, and analyze the solar cycle, but once a CME is launched, we only get 12 to 48 hours notice before it slams into Earth. At best. And not all CMEs are equal. Some will miss us entirely. Others arrive with little to no warning, moving faster than expected, and the stronger they are, the more damage they'll do. Current forecasting tools are good, but not good enough. We're always racing against time. A report published by the National Academy of Sciences warns that a superstorm could take months to restore power in some regions, cause widespread economic collapse in affected countries. It could disrupt international trade and communication and potentially cut off the internet in entire parts of the world for weeks. Banks, hospitals, traffic systems, airports, everything could be affected. And because our systems are all interconnected, damage in one region could cascade across the globe. So what can we do to get ready? 
Harden our infrastructure, meaning reinforcing power grids, shielding satellites and protecting data centers from geomagnetic disruption as a start. Improve early warning systems would help too. The satellites like NASA's DSCOVR or the upcoming SWFO mission help us monitor the sun in real time. But we need more investment and faster global response protocols. We can build resilience with emergency plans, backup power, local food and water storage, or even analog backups for communication systems, which could save lives. Governments, private industries, and individuals, we all have a role to play, because it's not a matter of if, it's when. We live on a planet shielded by a magnetic field, but that shield isn't perfect. And out there, 93 million miles away, our sun is watching waiting. The next solar superstorm could change life on Earth as we know it. If this episode opened your eyes, don't keep it to yourself. Share this video with someone who you think might like to know. Drop a comment. What would go down first if the power grid failed where you live? And subscribe to Dangerous Earth for more deep dives into hidden threats shaping our world, because surviving tomorrow starts with understanding today.